Hi guys, welcome back to Otter's RC Garage. Uh, I've changed up a couple of the camera settings, so I hope this is uh, filming a lot better than what it has been. Uh, let me know what you guys think. But today, we're going to be working on our Axial SCX-10. Alright guys, so this is everything we're going to accomplish, or we're going to try and accomplish today. Uh, we're going to get the shocks installed so it's not sitting as high. As you can see it's actually sitting pretty high. We're going to try and get it down to probably about there. That should be about normal ride height for it. Um, we also got some links. Now these links are for an SCX-10 II. Uh, we have an SCX-10 I. Um, you can tell mainly by the servo on the axles and the uh, axles are an AR-10 axle. Uh, now these links are for a setup with the servo mounted to the frame. So that being said these are for a three link front end uh, we have a four link. So we'll get as much of these links on there as we can. Um, this is going to lengthen the wheelbase um, and I should be able to at least figure out what extra link and what length I need for this truck so that I can keep the four links set up. Uh, and then, as I said, here's our axle housing. Uh, we have to fix that. That'll be done once we get the, uh, probably once we get the links and the shocks off. Uh, and next video, I'll be showing you guys how to mount these tires and rims. These are beadlock rims. Uh, they are a silver face with a gold, uh, green accent. Looks like gold, I don't know why. Um, but fairly easy to do. As you can see, there's six screws that go through. Um, they actually go through the front here on these side on these. Um, there's a ring on the inside sort of clamps everything together, but we'll get into that on the next video. Uh, make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Uh, we'll get those on there and we'll get those on the truck. Uh, I think that'll make that look a lot better other than those ugly looking, I don't know what those are, wheels. Ew. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is disconnect this, your steering servo. And from there, we're basically going to start ripping it apart. Shocks are coming off, front and rear. Uh, all the links are going to come off. I'm going to try and do just the front and then do just the back. Um, but while I got the front all off, uh, I'm gonna fix that, fix that axle. Um, if you can see it here, there's some play in this. I had to put new screws in, but those screws are stripped out, and those are ended up. Basically, it's this piece here that they screw into. So I got a whole new piece here for this. I'm gonna have to transfer all the guts of it out and over to it. Um, but first things first, we're gonna have to get to where this is off. So let's get at it.
So for you that are following along, uh, what I have done is I've taken the shocks, the top screws out of the shocks, and I've taken both the screws out of both sides for the upper and the lower links, disconnected our drive shaft, disconnected our steering servo, and there's our whole front unit. So this is what I was meaning by the steering servo is mounted to the axle, like right onto the axle. So all your steering is right onto this. So if you ever did actually want to do like say a four wheel steer, SCX10, this might be the way to go. Cause you could just get these A10 axles. They're a little bit light duty, but I'm guessing if you're doing four wheel steer, you're probably doing a light, a light duty crawler anyways, going for rock crawling. Um, and you could just mount one of these on the front and one of these, one on the rear. Um, you'd probably have to do some programming, fancy, but yeah, very doable. So I'm going to continue on here. I might leave these upper links and see if they're going to be the right length. If they're the right length, then I, no point in changing them out. But these rear links are definitely going to come off. Uh, I'm going to have to take the wheels, wheels off and, like I said, pretty much strip this uh, diff down and replace it. So continuing on. Alright guys, so here we have the axle torn apart and we are in the process 
of swapping stuff over. So one thing that I have learned, for one, you always want to make sure you check your bearings, make sure they spin. Um, they can cause a lot of problems if they don't. Uh, one way I've found that's really easy to hold these little bearings is some of these uh, snap ring pliers. Uh, you can hold the inner race then and you can spin the outer and make sure that it's actually moving. Um, if they're not moving, I have cleaned them up with some WD-40, just a little squirt, and just keep working them, working, 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 working. You'll, I've had ones that are solid and you can feel them finally break free and just keep working them and they'll, they'll come back to life. Um, but in the same sense, I think it's about 12, 15 bucks, you can get bearing sets for most of these. Um, these are just simple press-in bearings into these plastic. There's nothing really holding them in more than just a press fit. Um, some of them are a bit of a pain in the butt to uh, get pressed in. Uh, you just gotta force it. But what I like to do is lay it down flat, get it sort of lined up flat. And when we sort of have it lined up there, we're gonna take something that's nice and flat as well and heavy, like a ball and just give it a little push. That extra mass from the ball sort of helps you get it nice and seated. Now I'm not hammering on it, obviously, I'm just pushing on it. So there's that, there's your pinion. Here's your differential. Um, you can see everything. everything's spinning nice and smooth, so I know those bearings are working good. Uh, I'm gonna transfer some as much of that grease over into this new housing as I can, and Put it all back together gonna get some new screws for those one spot so everything looks nice and cleaned up and we're gonna get going camera I sort of put some few things together um, I got a new ball socket for the steering link here so that stiffened everything up and as you can tell this whole axle has become a lot nice and stiffer um, the new links I got so the new axles must be a little bit wider because that steering link is a bit wider and that would end up making us pretty towed out I think so not going to use that, but we are going to use the two lower links. Um, they are longer, a or actually, actually they're a little bit shorter to be honest, but these are for the correct wheelbase of what we're building this new Jeep for. Um, it did look like the fronts were shoved out a little bit far and that makes sense. I believe he got these a little bit longer because the idea was he was going to put a bend to them and make his own uh, high clearance links. So if you get the longer ones, you put the bend in, essentially it's shortening them with that bend so you can be at the same length. So we're gonna go ahead and put these links in and we're gonna put two of the shocks. Um, I have not put oil in these shocks yet. We're gonna put, build this whole thing and get everything mocked up, make sure that the springs are at the right rate and it's sitting at the right height where we like it. And then we'll go back through, we'll take the shocks off and we'll add the oil to them. Um, if you guys are interested in that, I can show you a video on that. If not, it is what it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these links and these shocks on and then we'll get this axle back underneath.
got the links in. We got the new shocks in. Um, if you look down in here real closely, uh, probably this view's best. Uh, we do still have those brass links in the upper spot on the front. Um, and that's just because, like I said before, I can't find any uh, four link front links. But we got the black ones in the back here, real nice, sort of stealthy looking. Uh, the new shocks here with that progressive rate spring. Uh, this might be able to show it off a little better here. So the progressive rate, what that means, um, as you can see on the spring there, I uh, got tight coils up top and real loose looking coils on the bottom. Um, I don't know if those springs are gonna stay because it is pretty extended, but once you get more weight on there, we'll see if those are setting right. So, but overall, I think this thing looking pretty good. It's a lot better height wise than what it was. It looks better than with those all brass links, I think. I guess that's a matter of personal opinion. Um, but yeah, so stay tuned. Next time, we're gonna be throwing some wheels on it. Uh, I'm gonna grab one. I'm gonna throw one on the front. Let's just give it a taste, see what it looks like. All right, look at that, guys. Look at that. That looks so good. Oh yeah, make sure you guys like and subscribe, more coming, I'll we'll put those other three together so at least we can have this thing looking decent on the bench, man that green looks good, so stay tuned, next time I'll show you guys how to do some beadlock wheels.